Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white reanimator deck as suggested and voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Velomachus alongside the newly printed Invoke Justice, a 5-mana sorcery returning target permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then we get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among creatures we control, and we can cast Invoke Justice as early as turn 4 in this deck, thanks to Seize the Spoils, letting us discard and draw 2, and make a treasure token in the process. So that way we can discard Velomachus and then turn 4, potentially reanimate it with Invoke Justice, putting 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Velomachus a 7 mana 5 5 legendary Elder Dragon with Flying, Vigilance, and Haste. And when Velomachus attacks, we get to look at the top 7 cards of our library to cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to Velomachus's power from among them without paying its mana cost. So Velomachus, enhanced with the counters from Invoke Justice, can cast even more expensive spells spells than 5 mana, which is usually the threshold, so Velomachus could cast Emiria's Call, which we're playing as a land, but also a 7 mana sorcery, making a pair of 4-4 four, four Angel Warrior creature tokens with flying, and then non-angel creatures we control gain indestructible until our next turn, so that also includes Velomachus, which will be indestructible, so it can maybe attack once again. So that's the big payoff for the deck. Then we've got another creature we're happy to reanimate, which is Returned Past Caller, a 6 mana 4-2 Spirit Cleric with flying, and when the Past Caller enters the battlefield, we get to return target, spirit, instant, or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand. So Past Caller can get back another Past Caller because it's a spirit, but it can also get back Invoke Justice, and if we cast Invoke Justice getting back Past Caller, get to distribute those counters, potentially making an 8-6 Past Caller, and then the Past Caller can get back the very same Invoke Justice that we just cast, so we can keep looping those over and over again. Then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some early removal to make sure we don't die while setting this all up. So we've got the full playset of Cathartic Pyre, can deal 3 to a creature or planeswalker, can also use it to discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many cards to put Velomachus and Pass Caller in the graveyard. Got two copies of a braid to deal three to a creature or destroy an artifact, and two copies of Fateful Absence to destroy a creature or planeswalker and let the opponent investigate. At three mana, I've been very impressed by Seismic Wave recently, dealing two damage to any target and one damage to each non-artifact creature target opponent controls, so shines against the white aggressive decks. And then Fable of the Mirror Breaker is a natural inclusion as a saga that we can also get back with Invoke Justice. Then it makes a creature that's a 2-2 Shaman making a treasure token when it attacks on the first chapter, so that can also help us ramp. On chapter 2 we get to discard up to 2 cards, then draw that many cards, so another discard outlet, and eventually transforms into Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is also quite powerful in combination with the Returned Pass Caller, if we can copy it and get back an extra instant or sorcery from our graveyard. Then at 4 mana, got two copies of Unexpected Windfall, very similar to Seize the Spoils, but we get to make two treasures instead of just one, so turn 4 Windfall could also just naturally let us cast a Velomachus on turn 5, even though we don't get the counters, so we won't be able to cast an Amiris Call until we do. And then the double red on Windfall kind of clashes with the quadruple white on Invoke Justice, but that's why we have all these red-white dual lands in the mana base, including the Snarl and Alpine Meadow. And then the Wandering Emperor, also a great fit here, as a Planeswalker that can exile tapped creatures, make 2-2 two -two Samurai tokens, and we can flash it in so we can keep it up alongside Unexpected Windfall, for instance, and we can even get it back with Invoke Justice, and the extra Samurais provide extra creatures to get those plus one plus one counters. Then we've covered the top end of our deck, have two creature lands in the mana base, don't want to go overboard since we already have quite a few tap lands with Alpine Meadow and Snarl most of the time, which doesn't have a ton of lands to reveal to it, only two mountains, two plains, and then the Alpine Meadow also counts as a mountain and a plains we can reveal to it, and then our better dual lands being the Pathway and Sundown Pass. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And yeah, I think we've got a keeper. We're missing Velomachus or Return Pass Caller to discard to Fable. But everything else is in place. Up against the blue white, so looks like a control deck. Not our favorite matchup, but if we can loop pass callers, that can be tough for the control deck to manage. I think we just jam Fable into a potential counterspell. Gets negated. Still have Windfall. So we'll pass. 
opponent's probably going to tap out for a 4-drop here. Behold. Well, now I probably want to Windfall before they can draw into another counter. Don't really like Fateful Absence in the matchup. Alright. Emerius Call's not that exciting to cast, as it gets answered by a Doomscar pretty easily. Opponent foretells. Abrade the draw. Well, still probably gonna go for it here, since we don't have anything else going on. If that resolves. Opponent's gonna take their draw step and probably Doomscar. And we'll have to wait another turn before casting another Emiria's Call. I guess we could invoke Justice and uh, try and get back our Fable. It's not unreasonable. Also gets negated. Opponent's not having any of it, since that Ravelry doesn't do anything. Okay, well, Velomachus, I could try and hardcast. Doesn't get answered by the Wandering Emperor, at least, but still a multitude of other removal spells they could have. So how about we Hemerius Call first? And test out the waters. All right, perfect. Gets countered by Saw It Coming. Velomachus should be better if it sticks around. Pass Caller is also nice. So, Pass Caller would probably go for Emiria's Call. I think I still Philomachus resolves, but could be removed before it gets to attack. Does not. Hoping for another Invoke, which we found. Get back Fable. Add more counters. Now we've already seen most copies of Emiria's Call, but now Philomachus could potentially find another one. Opponent falls to 11. And they still aren't doing anything. So, not sure what they're holding. Aha, farewell. That makes sense. Exiles everything, but there's another Velomachus. Let's try again. Get Seize the Spoils, get rid of a Braid. And I'll hang on to Snarl to discard to Cathartic Pirate at this point. Yeah, Farewell is quite effective against our Graveyard strategy. But uh, yeah, the haste means we at least got a nice hidden. Opponent at 6. Another Farewell does not go for Artifacts, so I guess I can keep my treasure. And I could Pyre. I think I'll take my draw step first. Fable. So I could Pyre, discarding just a Snarl, and then play Pass Caller, get back Pyre. Yeah. And then I'll keep Pathway in hand to discard either Pyre or Fable. Now pass caller if they could exile with the Wandering Emperor. But let's find out if they do have it. Yep. Could kill my own pass caller so it doesn't get exiled in case I find another one. Or I can keep Pyre to deal with the Emperor or to just discard my lands since Field of Ruin deals with Cave anyway. I think that's reasonable. So I might want to do that now. In case I find another spell I might want to cast. Fateful Absence and Pyre. Well, now I kind of want to Absence my own Pass Caller. So we get a clue token. 
And then I could Pyre Emperor. Definitely want to play Fable. So if I want to Pyre, I would have to use my treasure. How much do we care about Wandering Emperor making a 2-2? Not that much. Can just kill the Samurai next turn. If they have another farewell, I want to be able to crack the clue to draw a card. I have got new moves to teach you. Probably fine to do it now, actually. Give us more selection with Chapter 2. A braid can certainly go. Alongside Sundown Pass. Another cave. So I could Pyre to loot once again before attacking. Or we can keep it to kill Emperor, assuming they kill my Shaman. Let's attack first and find out. Alright, opponent's got a hole breaker, that's bad news. So that's gonna block and kind of take over the game from here. So we've already used multiple copies of Fateful Absence. So that's not something I can draw into with Pyre. I guess Pass Caller could get back Absence, but yeah, I think damage is happening. So I think I need to dig as opposed to killing the Emperor. Keep looting. But uh, it's not looking great. Well, at least a Wandering Emperor could exile Holebreaker if that attacks. Remember your training. They might be able to bounce it back. Fading Hope. And Holebreaker could bounce our Saga, although I'm happy to replay it. Another Wandering Emperor, okay. So that comes down again. Probably gonna bounce our Goblin Shaman. Remember your training. And then any reason to play Wandering Emperor now as opposed to Waiting until end of turn. It's probably fine to play it now. Fateful Absence kills Emperor and bounces the one on the stack. That's fine. Can still replay it in my turn. Now we get to crack a clue. So maybe delaying the inevitable here, as we picked up an Invoke Justice. Get rid of... how good is Seismic Wave? Not great. Philomachus, also exciting. So there's a Pass Caller in the Graveyard I can loop with Invoke Justice. Probably want to do this first. Alright, opponent's got another Emperor to bounce their own Holebreaker. Opponent's got a Pass Caller. 
opponent hangs on to the four loyalty one, so they won't be able to activate it. And then I can invoke justice on pass caller, get back, invoke justice. And our opponent explodes. Wow, we managed to outgrind blue white control thanks to pass caller in the late game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a somewhat reasonable hand. Get some interaction, and then both Fable and Seize the Spoils to keep digging through the deck. Up against Black White. So, play this on white, I think, in case we draw another Snarl. So I still have the basic in hand, although if we draw Windfall I might regret it. Professor gets to learn. Don't think Black White has many artifacts I need to kill, so we'll upgrade over Pyre. And go for Fable. Happy to discard double Pyre here. Hopefully there's no Vanishing Verse on Fable, just another Professor. Okay, so Pyre Pyre. And then might be okay to kill Professor, keep our Shaman to make more treasure. Or I can flash in Wandering Emperor. And then now I'll play a red source. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Put a plus one counter on our Shaman. I'm sure they'll have a way to remove the Wandering Emperor here. It's gonna be a wedding announcement instead. That's fine. So next turn they could Meat Hook Massacre for three, which is a reason to keep putting counters on the Shaman. Which I think I'm happy to do. And then seize the spoils. Probably wants to discard a land. Don't really want to play another Fable and overextend. Alright, there is an Invoke Justice, but still nothing amazing to get back. No attack, make a treasure. Still play the Snarl. So we've got a lot of mana. It's going to be a pest summoning. Make a few chumpers. And Rite of Oblivion dealing with Reflection. Could kill it with Cathartic Pyre so it doesn't get exiled. So I can invoke Justice at back. Not a terrible idea. Although I could also just discard another Fable to bring back with Invoke Justice. Nah, I think this is fine. Back off. Okay, so I can make a Samurai first to put a bunch of counters onto. So Massacre for 4 is what could happen next. Get back Fable. And then we'll spread it like this. Probably hang on to my land now to discard to the second chapter. Opponent's gonna hit their land drop. They could replay Rite of Oblivion once again. It's gonna be Sorin instead. Announcement transforms, pick up another Invoke Justice. So I guess we can discard Fable since we can invoke it back now. Fateful Absence could deal with Sorin. 
So let's see if I invoke. Can put two counters on the middle and one on the bigger ones. Can add a counter with the Wandering Emperor. And then we still have Fateful Absence available. So yeah, Meat Hook Massacre for five at most. And then... How do we attack? Definitely don't want to send everyone at Sorin. Could send one of them there. Or I can just go face with everyone. Yeah, let's just go face. Can always Fateful Absence Sorin if needed. Bone goes for the triple block and a chump. Okay. Sorin draws. It's going to cost two life. Nothing on Innistrad is free. And yeah, Massacre for five at most. Puts him back up to 15, still facing two 6-6 six, six creatures. So it's going to be a Spider Queen instead. I will show you what happened. A gift in exchange for loyalty. Seize the spoils I might as well hang on to. See what we can find. I'll take a Velomachus too at this point. Emiria's Call would make my team indestructible, although it doesn't help against Meat Hook Massacre. So, yeah, this is not ideal. Probably want to deal with a couple planeswalkers while we can. And then make my creature able to survive Massacre next turn by giving it first strike. So pump this one. Remember your training. And then I can send these at Spider Queen, 7-7 seven, seven at Sorin. They chump 7-7 seven, seven, Spider Queen dies. Or I can just send two at Spider Queen, forcing them to trade and chump. And then these two could go at Sorin. What if I just go face with everyone and they chump chump? Take seven maybe leaving them with a couple planeswalkers. I think Spider Queen has to go. Didn't think I'd play around Vanishing Verse. It could just be keeping of the clue token. And then this one at Sorin. And then I'll chump. And uh, maybe trade. Okay, and we'll pass. Burn and draws. So massacre for six incoming. Assuming they can play a land. All right, never mind. Burn goes for a welcoming vampire, probably because they were missing land. So massacre for six was not an option. Now, Emiria's Call making my team indestructible could be effective. Or we can just add a counter to the 6-6 six, six Shaman. Could see them right of Oblivion as well. Nope, another wedding announcement. So they're not 
casting the massacre just yet. Okay. So we have options. Reflection could also copy a creature, like maybe the angel we make of Emirio's call. So probably fine to cast one of them. And then still have a wandering emperor we can use. Copy angel. And then I'll keep growing the 6-6 six, six Shaman so it doesn't die to Massacre for 6. We've got the edge in this fight. think everyone can go face. And we'll pass it back. So Massacre for 6 incoming, most likely. Leaving us with two seven sevens. Opponent back up to 20. And they'll get a token end of turn as well. Velomachus, excellent draw. So, yeah, we'll uh, play Velomachus. And their opponent has seen enough. Sweet, so yeah, Velomachus very likely to find a removal spell in the top seven, can kill the token, and then we should have enough here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn two, a braid. Turn three, fable. Take it from there. So we've got tools against creature decks, and if we don't need them, we can simply discard them. Turn one, a red white pathway. Gonna keep up a braid as opposed to playing a tap to Maria's call. This could be a runes deck. Never mind, Thalia. So, probably a Naya aggro deck. Can be a tough matchup. Combination of white disruptive creatures, but they're less vulnerable to cards like Seismic Wave for the most part. And yeah, turn to Thalia's definitely our nemesis. It's going to be Adversary next. Well, now I'm tempted to just wait and keep up Seismic Wave instead of a Braiding. As I will be able to potentially deal 3 to a creature and clean up the 1 Toughness ones. They might attack first, or they might play the Partners, for instance. Yep, perfect. So... Three to the partners, and one to the rest. A nice three for one. Yeah, Seismic Wave keeps impressing. Next, play Fable, keep up a braid. Brutal Cathar, we can kill before it exiles. And at least one Seize the Spoils can go, maybe even both. I'll hang on to one of them. And then attack, make a treasure. And kind of lacking another fable here. Keep up Cathartic Pyre. 
Next turn we can Emiria's Call. We'll do the same as last time. Opponent can't be too happy about this. Wandering Emperor's Excellence. Manor opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. A braid into Fable. Can try to ramp towards Villamachus, or if we pick up Invoke Justice, we can discard it. Turn one forest, so. Alright, it's gonna be a dig up. Finding a swamp. It's pretty unusual. So, not sure what we're up against. Happy to play my Fable. And start producing treasure tokens. So Alpine Meadow can go and then probably just Mountain too. Or I can keep Mountain in case of a Snarl. Okay. Get to attack. Opponent's not intervening. We're gonna take out Cave. Don't have a way to use my floating mana here. Couple basics left. Pass it back. Binding takes care of, presumably, Fable itself. Ooh, invoke. So, did not discard Velomachus, but it's good insurance to have. Could cast it now. Putting counters on Shaman, get back Fable, which is still reasonable. Could also get back a land, although Fable seems better. And then next turn we can just hard cast Villamachus. I think that's pretty good here. And then Pass Caller can get back my uh, Invoke Justice as well. Bowen falls to 12. Five mana. Could see Invoke Despair. Yep. So that takes care of a creature. And my enchantments. Opponent gets to draw. We lose two. Still in reasonable shape. And it's probably time to slam Velomachus even without counters. Could have also played Cave and then uh, sacrifice an extra treasure. And no way to close out the game right now, but I'll take Seize the Spoils, discard a Braid. And another Invoke is nice to have. Opponents at 1, so they're dead if we sneeze on them. And they need to answer the boards, and then Invoke Justice can still get back a hasty Velomachus. Array of Enfeeblement, fair enough. So the Goblin Shaman is left. Dies to the Inscription. Okay. But now Invoke Justice should still do it. Even with another Ray of Enfeeblement, and our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet, so interesting archetype from our opponent, but was no match for Velomachus. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand has a ton of potential. Cathartic Pyre to maybe interact early, or help us find a third land, which wouldn't be necessary now. And then we've got Seize, Discard Velomachus, Invoke on 4. 
Although Blue Black might have something to say about it. Don't get to a braid bank buster. So we'll just hang on to Pyre. Night Witch resolves. Don't think I need to discard anything, since we can discard with the Seize the Spoils. And then probably want to play this on red, although a tiny chance we get punished if we draw more mountains. Alright, that worked. So everything is set up for our Invoke Justice. Although instant speed removal could still mess with our plan. So against black-based control decks, we're often better off getting back Pass Caller. It's going to be Concealing Curtains, but no land to activate it. Alright, so our opponent's fully tapped out. I'll have to play Iganjo here, which I'm happy to do. And then we get at least one nice attack in with Velomachus. And Emirius calls, perfect. Well, we've been able to pull it off quite a few times now. And our opponent concedes. Well, that was easy. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty underwhelming. No Invoke Justice, no creature that we're happy to discard. Just a bunch of removal. Let's try and find something more exciting. Alright, this counts. And then we'll get rid of an Abrade. Turn one Shambling Ghast. So we can Windfall and then maybe just hard cast Velomachus the turn after. I can think of one card I wouldn't mind drawing here, seeing all these one toughness creatures. Could Pyre to discard and draw. And then do I just get rid of two lands? Hang on to a Miria's call. Seems fine. And then next turn we can Windfall, discard one pass caller. So we're ready for Invoke Justice if we draw it. Down to 13 in the meantime, as our opponent adds another Shambling Ghast. Next turn we'll see Hive of the Eye Tyrant attack as well. So, it could have definitely gotten punished by a more aggressive start. We'll still need to stabilize soon. Alright, no Hive activations that are stuck on four lands. So they must have quite a bit of removal in hand, if that's the case. Or lots of five drops. Either way. Hope to find Invoke Justice. There we go. No Velomachus in the graveyard, sadly. But we can bring back a Pass Caller and get back our Invoke. There's a Soul Shatter we were expecting. So now the Hive could exile Pass Caller, but still no fifth land. We're down to five, however. So, in a bit of a precarious spot, as we are sort of expecting more removal. But now I could invoke Justice, get back Pass Caller, get Cathartic Pyre, which at least answers Hive. It's probably reasonable. Could also just cast past caller instead of using invoke. Although probably better to get the larger creature in play. Alright, there's another soul shatter. So at least we're not dead on board now, but 
Yeah, we're probably gonna end up dying to all these one ones. So Pwn is not gonna animate Hive because they know about Cathartic Pyre, which does allow me to maybe discard and draw instead. But at one life, we're pretty much gonna have to draw our Voltage Surge to survive. And now we're also dead to the five mana Invoke Despair if they have it, so... One one beat down, pretty embarrassing way to go. And it's gonna be meat massacre for one, killing their own creatures. That'll do too. Let's see what we would have drawn here. A land ceases spoils. All right, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand looks promising. Pyre can discard Velmachus, and then we've got our Invoke Justice. Don't have any way to make treasure, so it's going to be turn five at the earliest. Play this tapped. Okay, so probably needs some red mana. And if this is mono white we're playing against, Seismic Wave is going to be quite nice. So no need to Cathartic Pyre the adversary. Can discard up to two. And yeah, probably have to get rid of both copies of Velomachus, even though it could be nice to keep one in case we find a way to make some treasure and to ramp into it. Okay, um, yeah, now we've got a tough choice. Do I keep up... Seismic Wave, I think I have to. Although I wouldn't be able to play my 4-drop on curve now. Just too important that we handle the boards. If they play Spellbinder, I can kill both their creatures. Although that's going to get rid of my Invoke Justice. But now we can deal 2 to the opponents and still kill both 1-toughness creatures. So yeah, Seismic Wave keeps impressing. Seize the spoils I can cast. Do I get rid of Wandering Emperor? I think I do. And then Windfall for more ramp seems useful. Legion Angel. Not bad. But we should be able to go over the top. So, yeah, can just invoke justice here from hand, get back Velomachus, and see what we get. And find Emirius Call. We hit the jackpot. So the mono white tag doesn't have a ton of answers to Velomachus, because it doesn't tap opposing Wandering Emperors, can't exile it. So pretty much leaves Brutal Cathar and maybe Fateful Absence, which most decks aren't playing anymore. Sweet, on to the next one. We're on the play with a keepable hand. So sequencing, probably still Meadow on one. Probably wouldn't be able to abrade on two. Opponent appears to be on Naya enchantments or runes. And there's the invoke. Well, everything is in place for turn four Velomachus now. So just need to hit our land drops. And the Naya runes deck doesn't have a whole lot of interaction here that could mess us up. There's the land, so. Yeah. Things are looking up. Maybe a Runeforged Champion here. But the Rune deck usually doesn't have any instant speed removal for us to worry about, so... It's gonna be Naturalist plus maybe a 1-mana Rune of speed. Gets in for 3. But Velomachus is quite likely to find a removal spell here. Or, you know, finding a Maria Skull would be nice too. 
And yeah, there we go. I think that's still better than killing the naturalist when we have a wealth of spot removal in hand. Opponent is trying to process what just happened. They do have the Runeforge champion, so they do get to cast all their runes for free now. But unsure if that's going to be enough. They would need a lot of runes here to keep up with Velomachus. Maybe if they also had a generous visitor to add plus one counters, it would be a different story. Double Rune of Might. Philomancus is also indestructible this turn, so it can block regardless of how large the opponent's creatures are going to get. Another Rune of Might. Still within range of double removal spell here. Opponent suicide attacks. And can attack... See what we hit. Cathartic Pyre can destroy a champion. And then I might want to try and set up for another big play in case our opponent does somehow have a board wipe, but it doesn't seem very likely, and just keeping up a removal spell just to be safe is probably good enough. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our deck in action against a wide range of opponents, all the way from aggro to control. And with a good draw, our deck is certainly capable of beating all of them, even if we're not always going to have that perfect start of a turn 3 Cease the Spoils into turn 4 Invoke Justice, getting back Velomachus, maybe even finding an Emirius Call along the way. So sometimes we will have to work for it a little bit more, but our deck certainly has some quality cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and the Wandering Emperor that can slot into a lot of different decks, so you might already have those. And then a little bit of removal sprinkled in makes for a nice recipe. Although there are certainly decks that can counter our strategy, decks with those white disruptive creatures like Thalia and Elite Spellbinder can delay our game plan sometimes enough to kill us in the meantime. And then counter spells and discard spells can also potentially delay us from comboing. So even with a good draw, we can sometimes still fall short. So it's not going to be the most consistent deck to play ranked and play in events, but it's certainly a fun deck to try out if you happen to have the cards for it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.